Hello and welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Conspiracy. I'm Dave G and joining me today is my co-host. Hello everybody, I'm Kyle. And today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the brand new film from director Mark Foster. Forster, I should say. It is the American version of A Man Called Otto, of course, which is um, based on a Scandinavian film that um, came out a few years ago called A Man Called Ove, which was based on a novel by Frederick Backman of the same name. This time around, we see Otto played by Tom Hanks. And once again, he's that grumpy kind of guy who lives in a gated community this time around, not a village, a gated community. And um, he's kind of grumpy with everybody around him. But there's a, a darker side of what's happening with Otto as a character. And suddenly his life is turned upside down by the arrival um, of his neighbour, Marisol, played by Mariana Trevino, her two daughters and her husband as well. This is a film that I've got to be very, very careful because I don't want to spoil too much about it. And I was, after talking to a friend the other night, this is a film that people need to go into not knowing too much. I've worked out because my friend said he knew too much going in. So, mate... I saw the Scandinavian original, but you haven't. So tell us a little bit about what you thought of A Man Called Otto having not seen A Man Called Ove. Um, well, that's the thing. Like, it's probably a good thing that I didn't see the original because just, just in, in general, I, I really dis, I really dislike um, English language remakes just kind of on a, on a, uh, on a, on a personal level, like I, I just think that that film should be like a universally uh, uh, approachable thing, like regardless of of language or, or whatever. But I did enjoy this movie mostly thanks to the uh, the performances of of its actors. Uh, I thought that the story it was it kind of reminded me a lot of uh, One Foot in the Grave or uh, even the uh, the. Uh, the recent movie with Bill Murray and uh, Melissa McCarthy. Um, St. Jude. St. Jude, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, yeah, it reminded me a lot of that, and it, it had like a lot of heartfelt moments in it, but at some points I felt like it was a little bit too... Uh, I don't know, like considering how, how heavy some of the subject material in it is... And how lighthearted it was trying to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes I felt like it kind of clashed a little bit with the, um, with kind of the Americanization of it. I guess. Like I, I could definitely see how this story would be told in a in a European film, where I guess the the black humor would have fit with the the tone of the movie a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We, like yeah. that. That was something that, like, even just watching a movie, not having seen the original one, that that was something that I could kind of tell, like, yeah, I, I think that this stuff would have maybe fit a little bit better. Uh, whereas in, in this movie, just because you see, like, movies made in Hollywood and, and produced certain ways, written certain ways, and characters are written certain ways, and it's just like you think, yeah, it, it, I'm not sure if it really fits with the kind of Americanization of... Uh, or the Hollywoodization of of this uh, this storyline, but um, but that's that's just me as somebody that hasn't seen it. As you having seen the original, what did you think of it, dude? I, I almost felt like this felt like a different film. Um, mm. I, it's interesting because as you were saying that, I was scrolling through IMDb, and um, one of the first things that popped up was someone's comment saying. Why does America always have to make a remake of foreign language films? <laughs> it was fine, but I don't understand why America always has to make a remake of a perfectly good, already existing film or series. Th this, to me, almost felt like an entirely different film. Um, like you said, Scandinavia is very, very good at making these kind of dark comedies where um, they can make light of of something that's that's really really severe and and let's be honest Otto in this film um is suffering from um uh I can't say that without giving away a spoiler he's suffering mentally and yeah. also but I thought something that came across more in this film is the when they have the flashbacks to show how Otto got to the point where he is now 
it was very clear in this movie that Otto suffered from um, a form of autism um, for his entire life. Like, his fixation on um, the mechanics of everything. Um, someone suggested to me there's even a little bit of a feel of Asperger's in the Tom Hanks version of Otto in that um, at times it feels like he doesn't... Um, Empathise with other people. Yeah, like, like, and you can either take yeah. that, that he doesn't give a crap about them, or that internally he doesn't know how to feel about different things. But mm-hmm. I thought that was really played up more in Tom Hanks's version. I don't know whether Tom Hanks went away when he first read the script and said, look, I think this guy um, suffers from, from autism, or whether... Um, that was something that the director talked about for, for this version, but um, someone even said to me, it feels like he's playing an older version of Forrest Gump. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that was played up more in this film, and I think that's one of the things that really stood out to me in this film was with the American remake, I got more of a feeling that there was issues there for Otto his entire life, that it wasn't just one event that that led him to the position um, that he's at now. Mm. I thought it was very interesting with the way that they uh, played around also with the the different people that it's in his life. There's um, the transgender character Malcolm, played by Mac Bader. Um, There's uh, Jimmy, played by Cameron Britton. And, of course, um, Anita, played by Juanita Jennings. And Ruben, played by... Peter Lawson Jones, I think those relationships were perhaps even better explored um, in the American version. I'm not sure how I felt about the fact that in the American version, it's more about a gated community. Um, Like, it it kind of felt like a weird gated community in this one, Mm. like, rather than a village being under threat. So, I I thought that part was... uh, maybe didn't carry across as much, but I did like what they did with Otto as a character and how Tom Hanks handled that character. Yeah, because, I mean, something... Again, not not having seen the original, I, I didn't realise that there was a difference between it. I, I guess so the original was kind of set in, like, a village kind of thing. Cause yeah, yeah. That would, that would actually... I think that would make more sense as to why... There, there, are, there are other characters that Otto would be running into every day but not a whole lot of them. It wouldn't be like it'd be a lot, a lot more sparsely populated uh, an area than where he is, the gated community where he is in the movie. Because in the movie, you sh- where he's living, he's the the people are basically living on top of each other. There's houses along the street, and Tom, and, and Otto's character kind of he sees it as his job to to go up and down and check all the do all the chores, do the, do the, like, clean up the garbage and um, make sure that, that people aren't driving through the, the street when, even though it's a no through road and, and stuff like that. Um, but he only ever seemed to run into the same four or five people every day. And it just, it seemed, that was something that I think kind of added a, a level of, uh, uh, it made the, it made the whole area seem, the movie feel a, a bit artificial. Because yes. it, just, it looked like it was just filmed on a set, because it, uh, uh, you know, because kind of was. It was like he only ever seemed to run into the same jog, the same one guy that went jogging, the same w- woman that walks her dog, and like there wasn't like a, an actual. It wasn't like a feeling of a real community. Yeah. In that I got from this one, like I just felt that, uh, yeah, just just for what it is. Um, yeah, just it. That was something that I thought felt a little bit fake, which it would make sense now that, like, yeah, it's based on it's supposed to be a village. He's not supposed to be like living on top of, on top of his neighbors, basically. I guess COVID might have played a big part yeah. in that as well. Yeah. In that they, um, this was a film that was shot during the COVID period, so they may have been limited with how many mm. extras Extra, and stuff they yeah, could have had yeah, on definitely, set. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I I thought though that one of the things that they did use well with the other um, neighbours around him was I thought the story that they had around Anita and Ruben touched on something that we that I'm sure you and I have both experienced in our life um, where 
developers and people that think about money just see elderly people as someone that's in the way. Mm. Um, there's a really good storyline that comes through with this film where um, a, a developer um, seems to be having his way with the community and Otto is the only person that, that really sees him as the evil piece of crap that he actually is. <laughs> Um, and I thought that storyline was really well handled, um, especially with the way that they had Anita and Ruben set up as characters and in a way Otto is rude to them and we learn why he's rude to them as the film goes on. Um, and I thought, yeah, there were some really good parts of this film that, that showed that there was still a kindness to Otto that you could get to. So mm. I think those parts of the film um, make it work. But to me, this film never went into that sappy kind of thing that Hollywood does sometimes where it's like, okay, so this guy's a, a real prick to people, but um, by the end of it, he's going to be an absolute saint and everything's going to be perfect. Okay. I liked that this film um, didn't go for a traditional kind of Hollywood ending um, and that there was a darkness with this film all the way through. Like, um, I guess we can talk about it because it is mentioned in a lot, a lot of the press about this film, but even when things look like they're going well for Otto, he still is looking for a way out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like that that is in this film and that and there's no magical cure for, for Otto and what he's going through mentally. Yeah, for his, his basically his depression, basically, yeah. and um, yeah, I mean, that was why it was something that just I don't think that it really, I mean, yeah, just it it, it did kind of clash a little bit with the lighter moments of the film, I think, just because of how how uh, yeah how they they chose to portray it, but um, I something I really did like though in in the film was um, the relationship between Otto and Marisol, uh, the neighbor, the new neighbor that, that moves in. Um, I thought that, uh, the, the actress who, pl who played, uh, Marisol, uh, Mariana Trevino. Yeah. Um, look, she really, she really knocked it out of the park as far as like, just being this kind of like fiery, um, fiery little, little crazy woman that, um, that kind of brings, brings Otto, like forces Otto to come out of his shell. Yeah. And I, I really like, like, she actually, she actually kind of like upstages Tom Hanks quite a lot throughout the movie. She yep. kind of steals a lot of scenes from him. And I thought that was like, I really did like her character. What, what did you think of the, um, the, the new neighbors? I thought that, um, well, sorry, the, the other thing, I did think that the, uh, her husband, uh, Tommy was a little bit underutilized. Um, I, uh, I, he's mostly just, there is a joke like yeah. kind of yeah he's a, he's a goofball and all that i mainly the relationship is between otto and marisol but i did think that especially towards the later parts of the movie i think more could have been done with tommy but uh what did you think of the the, the new neighbors yeah I'm, I'm the same as you i i thought that um the actress playing marisol did such an amazing job i i sometimes struggle watching tom hanks um as an actor because he's one <laughs> of those people that when I see him playing a role, I still see Tom Hanks. Mm. Like, I don't know what it is, but he doesn't... <laughs> it's not like for me if I... Like, if I sit down and watch Joker with Wakan Phoenix, I see the Joker. I don't see Wakan yeah, Phoenix yeah. playing that role. Whereas with Tom Hanks, it's like, oh, wow, so this, in this movie, Tom Hanks is playing a pilot that crashes a plane. It's like, I always see him. But for some reason with this film, and I think it was because of the performances of those around him, I, I kind of got more of a feeling of the character of Otto. Mm. Um, and I forgot that I was watching Tom Hanks. I was instead watching this slightly autistic, grumpy old guy. Um, and I think that um, enhanced, I think that was enhanced by the actors around him. Um, and, and like you said, the actress that plays Marisol she does an absolutely amazing job um, with this film, Mariana Trevino. And I, I, I find it really good mm. that the director and the, um, the casting people kind of went for people that were not known 
This yeah, could have yeah. been very easily have been like we were talking before with St. Jude, where it's like, okay, so we'll get Bill Murray, but then we'll get Melissa McCarthy in there, and um, we'll get a whole bunch of other people that people already know. Um, and I think that kind of enhanced this film in the sense that you did see them as the characters that they were playing rather than, um, oh, look, that's Salma Hayek playing Tom yeah, Hanks' yeah. neighbour. I, I recognised um, the only, I think really the only actor on in the cast that I recognised, I think, was the, um, the, the, the asshole who's trying to run the family out of the, run the, the, the elderly couple out of their home, because I, I know that's a stand-up comedian called uh, Mike DeBiglia. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's the only other guy other than Tom Hanks I recognise. So, yeah, that was something that was, that was um, an interesting change. Like, um, uh, uh, Mariana Trevino, she's in, um, she's in a lot more uh, um, uh, Latina shows and, and um some of them which are on Netflix, but yeah, she hasn't really made a, a, a huge name for herself in, in Hollywood yet. Uh, and yeah, same, same thing for the rest of the cast really. It's like a lot of them that you, that you just wouldn't recognize. And yeah, it, it did really, it did really help. Um, it helped that they kind of blended in to the, to the world, I guess. Yeah. And there was something natural about, the way that they had the relationships with the characters develop as well. Quite often in movies like this, where they're trying to tug at the heartstrings, they'll really enhance things. But like, even just the natural way that they had, um, Otto and the character of Malcolm, um, introduced to each other. It's like, uh, Malcolm is the delivery person, um, that's angering Otto because of the way that they leave their bike laying around. And then, yeah. um, Otto starts to talk to them and you realize that there's more to Malcolm than meets the eye. But the, all of that language was, was really natural. That didn't, it didn't feel forced. Like mm. sometimes I think like you and I will talk about, um, you'll see an ad or something on television and it's like, those four people would never hang out with each other in real yeah, life. Yeah. Whereas with this one, there was, there was a natural kind of feeling to, to how everybody, um, meets and the relationships between them. Um, and I really, really liked that. I liked that, the, that, and I think that natural feeling makes you feel more attracted to the film. You feel as an, as an audience member, like you're part of the film because it feels like you're right there with them. Whereas when they do that thing where it's like, um, oh, we need to, we need to bring a minority into this film. So let's, um, just force it in. Like we'll force that to happen. And then as an audience, you're sitting back watching it going, these people would, would never talk to each other in real life. Like there's no yeah. way this would happen. Whereas with this film, it's so natural and it's so beautiful at the way that they do that, that when you watch it, you think, I'm right there with them. I'm watching this relationship develop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it did, like... Um, yeah, it, it really did help. Just how, how well uh, put together the actors and the casting and all that was... I, I did think that sometimes um, there was a bit of a clash between how Otto... How old school they were trying to portray him, but then at the same time how... Um, how uh, progressive he was at the yeah. same time. Uh, I did think there was a, a bit of a clash between that, but uh, just because, but um, just because of how it was handled, um, it wasn't that. Uh, I I think he, it could have been that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He he. There was no vindictiveness to him. Like there was a lot yeah. of old. There, there there could have been a. Um, it just could have been done maybe a little bit more to show that. Like yeah, he was an old an old old style guy with old style views, but there wasn't any vindictiveness or any kind of maliciousness to him. And he was still accepting of, of everybody. I, I have a yeah. theory. I have a theory on that. I have a theory that a lot of filmmakers will see a script and go, right. So this character's in their fifties and they're almost 60 kind of thing. Mm. And they go back to the films that they watched as a kid. But what they don't realize is that the films that we watched as a kid, like I'm, I'm in my 40s, so when I watched a film as a child, that was 30 years ago. So someone that was 50 years old 
30 years ago was born around the time of of the war or before the war yeah. someone who's 50 years old today was almost born in the 80s Um, And I think a lot of filmmakers forget that and they think that they have to go back and portray an older person as the way it was portrayed for them as a child. I mean, somebody pointed out to me the other day that in seven years time, someone who is 50 will have been born in 1980. It's (laughs) like, and a 1980, a a child born in the 1980s is very different to someone who was born in the 1940s. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think a lot of filmmakers forget that. I, I'm hoping at some stage they catch up, um, because like even like ugh, there was someone that I went to um, university with, and I happened to find out one day when they were talking to me that they were 20 years older than me. They didn't look 20 years older than me, but they were very different to how I would normally expect someone who was in their 40s to be. Um, And I realized at the time it was because when I watched movies and TV shows of people in their 40s, that was set 20 years earlier. So I I think that's part of the problem that we still see today. And I think they do that with Otto a little bit. They they almost make Otto feel like he's in his 80s. But really, realistically, he's, he's, he's supposed to be in his 50s and not even 60 yet. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you look at, like, an actor like, uh, <clears throat> like Brad Pitt, he's, he's 60, but you wouldn't think that. Yeah. Especially because it's just how they put, how he's portrayed in movies and stuff, whereas, yeah, I, I agree, like, the character of Otto, it's kind of just the way that he's portrayed in this movie, it's almost like he's supposed to be a lot older than he actually is. Yeah. But, yeah, um, but, I don't know, I, I think, it, it's, there, there's certain, um, I guess character, uh, what's like um, certain character personas that that throughout movies that they're going to have to keep. They're going to have to keep like the the old decrepit old guy. You know, if they want to tell those kind of stories, yeah. You know, they've got to keep like that that kind of character. Even though, like now looking at it, like hey, this 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 decrepit old guy is only like ten years older than me, and <laughs> you, know, like, you know, so yeah, but. I don't know. Uh, yeah, with this, uh, I, I, I did something that I... Can, can we talk about the flashbacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I did like in this, um, <laughs> I guess talking about uh, aging and stuff, uh, uh, in this, um, the younger char- the younger version of Otto is um, played by uh, Tom Hanks's younger son, Truman Hanks. Um, and he does have those same eyes as Tom Hanks. But, um, yeah, it, it kind of like when I was watching it, I was thinking, oh, yeah, like that now um, Colin Hanks is now too <laughs> old to play the young Tom Hanks. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, <laughs> like we're getting too old. But, um, but yeah, no, the even though if they were if they were casting, um, if they were casting somebody to play a young Tom Hanks, they wouldn't have cast uh, Truman Hanks just on appearances because he doesn't particularly look. Yeah. too much like uh, Tom Hanks, but there is something in in his eyes and just like being able to see that and see that rec- and, and being able to see, yeah, this, this is obviously a, a, one of, one of Tom Hanks's kids. Um, it, that did help us connect a lot more with the, um, with the younger version of Otto. Like, even though character wise, he's a completely different persona. Yeah. Like he is, he, he's not idealistic, but he's, a lot more nervous and, and especially before all of the things that were taken from Otto that made Otto the way that he is now, this is Otto before he got all those things. Yeah. So it was, it was an interesting, um, diff- completely different take on, on that character. But, but Truman did a, a really good job. I think this is really bad, but every time they did one of those flashbacks, I kept on thinking of um of Forrest Gump, and I was like, <laughs> "It's Jenny, Jenny's <laughs> come back." Like, <laughs> oh no, cause she did. No, yeah, his, uh, his his missus did kind of look a bit like <laughs> like the uh, like Robin Wright. <laughs> but no, look, I think the flashbacks did actually work. I think that was a, a key part to this film working was that you had to understand how Otto mm. got to the point where he was today. Um. Like, I, I've always loved 
uh, television shows, like you said before, like One Foot in the Grave, and I've always loved keeping up appearances and mm, mm. and shows like that. But quite often in those shows, you never get to see how the person became the person that they are. Like if you if you think of keeping up appearances, how did Hyacinth become the way that she is when <laughs> um, she grew up around people like? Um, yeah. like her sisters her and sister, yeah. her Daisy dad and, is just an old yeah. pervert. Like, it's <laughs> like, how did Hyacinth become that? And it's not really ever explored. Whereas with these flashbacks, you see how Otto became the, the man that we see in the film mm-hmm. because of the, of the different things that, that happened throughout his life. So yeah, I thought that was a really key part to this film working and, and they worked pretty well. Yeah, I think, um, in fact, if anything, that those parts, prob- uh, uh, Truman uh, Hanks probably had more range in his his role than Tom Hanks had in his. Yeah. <laughs> like, good. So, yeah, I think that he did really, they, I, I really did like those um, those flash pa- flashback parts. But the, um, the, the like, father-daughter chemistry that, um, Trevi- that, um, that Hanks and uh, Trevino share, like, that really... Um, that that's really central to the movie, and I thought that 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 part I've got no complaints about. I thought that that really worked, um, and helped sell the the whole idea of this character being having kind of his his lust for life uh, rejuvenated. Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. So I guess to sum up, what are you going to give this one out of five, and why? Uh, I'm going to give this three and a half out of five. Uh, I did enjoy it. Um, I felt there was, uh, like I say, a couple of little, um, a couple of clashes between in tone that I thought didn't where it, it didn't quite, um, it didn't quite work. Maybe the the translation to the uh, from from translating uh, kind of a more European story to an American movie. I think that might have hurt it a bit, but. Um, I did it and did enjoy it. I did find it uh, humorous in parts, and I thought that the um, the two le- the the leads in uh, in Tom Hanks and um, and uh, Trevino, I thought they really helped sell the film. So so three and three and a half out of five for me. Yeah, I'm giving it three and a half out of five as well. I thought that um, this was one of those Tom Hanks movies, like I said before, where I actually saw the character he was playing and not just yeah. Tom Hanks um, in the film. Uh, I like the way that they set up Otto so that you understand more about why he's mentally the way that that he is today. I thought that was a a really, really key part to this film, and it worked really, really well. So, yeah, I'm going to give it three and a half as well. And that's it for this episode of The Popcorn Conspiracy. We're both giving A Man Called Otto um, three and a half stars, so go along, check it out, see what you think as well. But for now, I've been Dave G. And I've been Kyle. And we'll be back soon with another episode of The Popcorn Conspiracy.